Good morning, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about something that I've seen pop up. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of research into the RB20 because I thought it was an interesting design and um, there's a lot of speculation on the car. And um, today I'm gonna be shortly highlighting two of these uh, rumors. First one is the front wing and second one is the side pod or lack thereof, as some seem to think is going to happen. Um, I'm going to give my take on it. I'm not saying that it will be like that. Um, I'm just a fan trying to think out loud. Um, so, you know, just see what you can see. But um, yeah, I'm hoping you enjoy this video. If you do, then please give it a like and uh, comment if you want. Um, so um, today we're going straight into it and um, the comparison basically or the video will revolve around is Red Bull going to a zero side pod design and will it copy the Mercedes? That's the question and I will try and explain it best as I can. So let's dive into the Mercedes zero side pod that they had and you know if the rumors are true that Red Bull is going for a zero side pod design then why I think they're not. Uh, going to cop be copying Mercedes. So for copyright reasons on pictures and what what I'm just drawing it because I'm able to draw it. Um, so this is a quick sketch of the Mercedes. Um, yeah, basically no side pod design that they had. Um, obviously with the idea to maximize the floor surface here um, for good downforce. So uh, what they had is the top element here which is your side impact structure mainly and also it creates a downwash feature to wash the air down onto the diffuser um, and then the side inlet next to the monocoque so the reason why i think adrian Newey looked at this and thought mm, this could work is because of the floor section being exposed but then immediately i think he thought well this is not the way to do it and the reason why I'm saying that is that, first of all, as we talked about in the last video and, and a lot of other guys talk about as well, is that you have this dirty air coming off your monocoque, off the top vortices that roll down. And so basically you have vortices that roll down like this. You have your boundary layer coming off the side of the monocoque. So basically this inlet takes in a lot of dirty air then so so this inlet wouldn't be really uh suitable for cooling i think mercedes experimented a little bit with some fins in front of it to to create a little bit better airflow into the radiators but i think in the end um it also didn't give them the exact effect that they wanted and the big problem for mercedes was that um two things first of all they needed to control the ride better which they weren't able to do with their platform that they had back then. Um, second of all, the problem that they had was that um, they thought they could run the floor on the ground and have maximum downforce that way. Um, but you can't, uh, because to, basically your floor starts stalling and your car starts bouncing, popsing. And um, that was basically a, a flaw in their design philosophy as well. So the initial idea of, of having a lot of floor area available to you for downforce creation was fine. Um, and then the other thing I think um, a lot of teams wouldn't do is that they made very sharp edges. So the air would would yeah basically create vortices as it was coming over this. But then the air isn't supported much. And I think that is the main reason why this zero side pod concept didn't work very well. Is, is there's no support for the air. Um, I'm I'm working with vacuumation, which is aerodynamics. Um, and and for example, if I want to pick up a rock, I need to force it. I need to force the air to go over that rock. Otherwise, it won't pick up that rock. So, if you want to control the air and tell the air what to do, you need to force it. You cannot just say. I'm hoping it will be fine. You need to force it. And this design basically doesn't force the air. And I think that is one of the things where message went wrong. So when looking at this, I think Adrian Newey thought something very differently. And I will show you a picture right now of an old 
Formula Formula 2000 Formula 3 car that has this extended airbox out of the side, and I think Adrian Newey might have gotten some inspiration from that. So here you can see a cross cut basically of that um, the floor profile, that wing shape, the the dark part, and then it goes on into the diffuser, and then here the back you have the beam wings, and you have the cannon. You have that little flap over the inlet and then this is basically your zero side pot. So here the air comes into the throat, goes down under the car and out to the diffuser. Here the air is brought down but not really in a controlled manner. And basically you're hoping that this air that is here is doing something to empower this, which to me, it's no. It doesn't sound like a feasible plan, to be honest. It it doesn't really feel like something that would actually happen. There's no control over the air, so to assume that it would give you a nice flow towards rear, as we know, we want, you know, as you see with the water slides, they are looking for control onto the diffuser with the air. They want powerful airflow onto the diffuser. So with this design, I don't think you can there's just no control over the air to generate this. A simple design example here. So let's say this is a Nissan Skyline R34. Um, so it's quite a square car. Um, if we do nothing here, basically what happens is the air comes off the roof line and, you know, basically creates a turbulent layer. And this means that your rear window is always full of mud and full of dirt and full of, you know, not so pleasant stuff. And then you have to add a rear windscreen wiper to get it off. So that's that's a little bit... Um, yeah, that's not ideal. So the reason why most cars have a wing is to create an attachment point. So basically what happens now is that the air comes off the roof line and reattaches itself to the wing and then leaves the car and then starts to do crazy stuff here. Awake. Yeah. So, but now with the skyline having the lights high up in the car, your lights get dirty. So the last step that they made is that they said, okay, we're gonna add a little gurney to that to give a kick to have this there. So obviously it creates downforce now, it reattaches the airflow, and it keeps the rear lights and the license plate clean. So, but this reattaching of the airflow, remember you have basically your front wing, then you have your suspension components, you have your throat of your diffuser, you have an inlet of sorts. Let's take what most guys are running right now, an intake similar to this with the undercut and then the side pot water slide. So that airflow that comes off here, you want to direct it and you want to reconnect it. That's what you want. So and then I think that is in basics where the Mercedes design was flawed. It didn't reconnect the airflow. It didn't guide the air to where it was supposed to go. So now I want to go to another topic. And that is the front wing. I've watched a lot of videos now on the whole Red Bull car and also on things like the front wing and, and the diffuser and the side pods and what what. So A lot of people said the front wing is the same as last year's. I believe that too. And there was this little cap. And that little cap was basically hiding this. The little cap was over here. And it was hiding this. It is speculated that Red Bull will have two separate planes under the nose. So this is the nose cone with the crest structure inside. And then they have two loose planes. So 
a lot of cars had you know in the beginning of the era the, the nose cone was attached to the lower lip and now most teams have the lower lip disconnected from the second element but uh, some people think that Red Bull has two loose elements right now and the fact that there was a little cover here that was clearly bolted in seems to suggest that there's also someone that said that Red Bull is struggling to get through the crash test with their new nose which could support this as well what we've seen now is that teams are adding stays between the wing elements so if Red Bull is doing something like this and then adding stays to the wing element to make it stiffer and stronger that could potentially be something that they are doing so this is the first sketch of what I think Red Bull is doing okay so we know the intake we know the, the cannons and we know the trench that is here so the cockpit losses will go into this trench behind the cannons your big air intakes are here above the driver's head and then as we discussed previously this is not your inlet this is an S duct so the air that rolls off here the dirty air the wake you know the vortices and whatnot is sucked up here so that high velocity air is going onto your side pod now as I mentioned if you look at that um, the GT3 or that, or that sorry the the F3 uh, inlet that they had on the side of the engine cover I think Adrian Newey took a, um, inspiration from that so what he basically or what I think Red Bull is going to do what I think Red Bull is going to do is that they have this top surface which with with the water slide that reconnects the air and forces it to the rear to the diffuser and the B-wing and then obviously the hot air comes out of the bazooka also going over the beam wings. So then at least the air from the front wing goes through the suspension with that push rod, uh, sorry, pull rod suspension, allowing the airflow to go through onto this reconnecting onto the profile. So that is one part of it. The second part is the inlet itself, which is underneath here. Um, like a like a little suction fish or sturgeon or some of the bottom feeding sharks that have the, you know is a very flat inlet mouth basically um, I will have a, a little sketch uh, so basically for those who haven't seen it if you look here at the bottom if, if you look at the bottom you have the front lip then it goes to the side for the legality box and then out and then basically underneath here it seems like there is an intake and then this is the monocoque so this is looking on the bottom onto the side pod so basically here if you look up here then it is something like this that you'll see apparently okay so we have the airflow going over the top we have the airflow going underneath it but now I think the problem that Mercedes had is that Mercedes didn't have any control here so what they've done first of all what most cars have is a little bit of a bump on the top on the outside of the side pod basically um, trapping the air that comes down the water slide so it's in between the, the cannons and the little edge here and then the other thing is that this bottom lip which is basically a big droplet shape traps the air into this tunnel going to the rear so if you look at the side as a cross cut basically so the cross cut will be basically something like this so the air travels over here so it reattaches travels over here and down washes onto the diffuser the other part of the air goes in to the airbox and the other part goes down here and it is trapped by that lip that is in front of here as well so the air is trapped in a, like a, a, a canyon type uh, shape so 
if you look from the front you have the floor of the card and you get a, a big chamfer I believe then another big chamfer and then you get this lowered profile you get a little bit of a raise here and this is then basically your water slide so all the air will travel in this channel and then basically this little lip ensures that the airflow is here on top on the water slide and this channel basically ensures that the air goes underneath and stays in this channel but there's one more thing if you look at the Silverstone test there's a kick up on the floor here and that kick up on the floor in the rain seems to do the following it is kicked up almost like so and it seems to close off the side of the car so the airflow can be here and can be here and here on the top but it cannot really exit and at the bottom what I think if you look from the bottom they have this droplet shape so this is that channel that I'm talking about so all the air is moving through here and then the back here ends in the top plane ends into a sharp point so basically this goes into a sharp point that is this line here and then this bulge is a droplet that turns in so the air on the bottom goes inwards and that is so that it is forced past the rear tire so your rear tire will be here so this narrowing of the shape will ensure that this airflow is pulled back in so you're capturing the air and you're basically so what we saw the floor do is a lot of the time it down washes and create vertice, vortices down so there's a big vortice here and then this would be the road so basically it creates an enclosure where the air is trapped under the car and I think Red Bull also basically made a curtain to the side of the car to at this point here trap the air and force it back in to go over the diffuser and past the, the rear wheel so I think if Red Bull is going for a zero side pot which uh, several people seem to suggest I think it will be something like this so maybe a little bit better sketch so again looking from the bottom so this is your intake and then what I forgot to draw here is that at your intake here you'll have that that inlet box so this is your inlet channel and then the air goes around this bulge which is then this part here and it as it you know goes inwards here so you to your top water slide the bulge that prevents outwash and then this lip on the floor that creates that curtain on the side that forces the air back in past the rear wheel onto the beam wings I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.